looking forward to a nice invigorating session with you. So uh, boys and girls, uh, welcome and uh, uh, let's go forward and over to you, Sham. Yeah, man. Uh, it'd be great if you could give me one second. I'm just going to switch to my laptop. It's giving me a yeah. bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Just going to go on mute. So the kids are all ready with their questions, Ruthika? Yes, ma'am. They're all ready, ma'am. They're that's all good. set for the day. That's, that's right. That's good. Hi, uh, sorry, am I audible? Um, your voice is giving an echo. Yeah, is it is it better now? Now it's okay. It's okay. I think you've uh, uh, come out of the uh, phone and only the laptop and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can uh, uh, share your screen and you can take over. Sure. I'm just gonna... Okay, my webcam isn't working for some reason. This is odd. Um, I'll uh, share my screen though and proceed right Ma'am, you're on mute, ma'am. Rupa, ma'am, you're on mute. Okay, yeah. Share your screen. Thanks, Ruthika. Uh, yeah. Share your screen and we can start. Sure thing. Yeah. yeah, is it visible? Yeah. All right. I'm going to present now. So hi everyone, my name is Shyam. Yeah, and um, so and what I do is I work as a copywriter within a digital advertising agency. Okay, uh, now uh, copywriting is essentially so within a digital advertising agency there are multiple roles, and uh, there is the creative uh, department within every advertising agency. You know, and uh, the creative um, you know part of it, the creative department has. Generally, you have uh, people who are visually um, focused, who are designers, right? Who think visually and ideate visually, who are comfortable, who work on Photoshop, who work on, you know, Adobe Illustrator, you know, you have animators who work on Adobe, on other Adobe tools, right? Uh, make GIFs, make 
you know interesting creatives you know uh, so that is what you know uh, designers do right and then you have uh, writers who essentially yeah, our job is to like um, ideate it's to so yeah i'll just get to what our job is all about so it's thinking right part one is thinking which is essentially uh, you know whenever a piece of communication is uh, going out for a brand right um so we work with uh, like quite a few brands uh, on a day to day basis and um, you know a point one of our task starts with like um, you know some kind of a brief coming to us from the brand you know the brand tells us today we want to make today ipl is going on and you know or like in a month ipl will be going on uh, we want our brand to say something or you know we want uh, to communicate uh you know our uh, partnership with the ipl or something like that right so part one of our job is essentially thinking because uh, now we just don't have to be creative we have to be creative in a way that makes sense for the brand right it's about creativity within uh you know the set of guidelines you know um it's like there's there's rules um uh, to uh, it you know like you can't be so creative as to uh you know it's like if you're writing for pepsi or you're writing for coca cola or you're writing for fevi call right you can't you still have to sound like fevi call you still have to write as fevi call but you have to write creatively so that's the challenge here and um, part one of that starts with the thinking right and it's uh, thinking is all about you know okay am i writing this piece who am i writing this piece for right if i'm writing an ad if i'm writing say a post or if i'm uh, for instagram right so digital advertisers uh, like uh, we work on a multiple on a multiple range of platforms which goes from instagram to facebook to linkedin to youtube and everything right and everywhere uh, on a brand's page we can have different kinds of people following it right so on instagram it might be that a brand has a very young audience who are very fun loving right so take for example a brand like an academy right um they are an e learning platform and on instagram they will have their students following them who are uh, young they are curious they are fun loving and you know so that is going to be uh, who an academy is talking to on instagram while say on a professional platform like a linkedin right uh, where um, you know it's all about jobs and it's all about getting uh, you know uh, it's all about connecting with professionals all around the world an academy is going to have a very serious audience you know it's going to have an audience of professionals who want to know um uh, more about you know the um they'll want to know more about what an academy is doing what kind of innovation are they doing when it comes to their online learning and everything right so thinking is essentially it's not just thinking about what can the brand do it's also thinking about what would my audience like to hear who am i talking to right with this specific task and what would they want to hear what would they connect with right um so yeah part one is thinking uh, within a brand guidelines and within what the audience would like to hear from me within what would be relevant to the audience right and um, the second part is essentially the writing right uh, because um, once you arrive upon a concept i bounce it past my seniors i get their approval right maybe uh, you know uh, then if they have some tweaks if they have like a lot of feedback i incorporate that and then i start the writing of it so whatever i'm writing right it could be a simple post that goes up on a brand's uh, instagram profile or facebook profile or it could be something uh, you know as a uh, time taking as say a digital uh, film right a, a brand film a, a sort of uh, i mean it's essentially your internet version of the tv commercial right because if you go, go to say um, hp's um, youtube handle youtube account you will see that um, you know they have been doing like a lot of films that get released online right and you'll see these as like youtube ads and everything um all the time so when you're on youtube so essentially what we are writing could range anywhere between like a simple post to you know an ad film right and um the tricky part about writing that i learned you know as i was stepping into advertising a lot of people you know did warn me because uh, as man said earlier i mean i'm very comfortable with english i have a genuine love for the language but what um, copywriting also requires from you and uh, since india is the country we're in right and um, you know 
uh while hindi is still the uh, hindi is still you know the predominant language spoken uh in india you know apart from english and uh if you want to you know connect with say a rural audience or a semi rural audience or um you know even if you want to connect with someone in an informal familiar friendly manner hindi is the language that a lot of brands will prefer right <coughs> so what what have you know picked up along with right i mean what comes along with writing is that you'll need uh, this proficiency in english and you know a decent amount of proficiency in hindi and yeah like personally that's what i've been trying to do over my three years in advertising you know like i entered quite proficient in english uh, and i've slowly been trying to build up my proficiency in hindi by you know whatever it is you know watching bollywood films or you know listening to hindi music understanding you know um how i can use this language to connect to my audience right because once you unlock an a language you are unlocking your access to an entire audience as far as advertising is concerned right so it's essentially the writing part of it that comes right um then there is the collaborating so um this is where you take you know this is essentially the feedback process you take it to your seniors you you take what you've written to your seniors you might get a lot of feedback from them you take what you've written to you know your clients right who are essentially the people who end up paying you for the work you do right it could be it 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 could be any of these brands right it could be um you know your an academy pepsi hp whoever it is right and you take it to them you incorporate the feedback they have and you know you realize that um uh you know most people think of um writing as a very individualistic process in the sense that um you know oh it is one especially i mean it may be true in a lot of cases you know where uh, you know if it's a novel being written it's one writer sitting in one room you know uh, tapping their keys away and the what comes out at the end is something they can call exclusively theirs right there is that sense of ownership there is that sense of uh, you know okay this birth out of my mind right i gave birth to this from my own mind and while there may have been an editor or i may have asked my friends for an opinion that was purely you know um upon me that was my choice right while in advertising we have to you know it's a very collaborative process if i have an idea for a post right i write um i write some copy i write some words you know i write whatever the uh, instagram post is supposed to be about i have to have a talk about it with my designer right because uh, the person who's designing it will have a visual thought right and we have to see whether we match we have to see whether what we are doing is right for the brand and often times an idea will evolve you know uh, simply within um the the, create, the process of taking feedback and you'll see that an idea becomes uh, some you know it gains like an angle to it that you never had when you were setting out uh, to write it but yeah that's part of the fun of it you know uh, you never know how things are going to mutate and you know most of the times when it does it's for the better you know um and yeah the last one is persevering so um like i mentioned you know there's um, a lot of thinking it's a lot of writing that goes in it's a lot of collaboration it's a lot of taking feedback right and um the reality is that a lot of times um the work you do especially the bigger work if you're pitching a film um if you're like trying to sell a client on like an ad film that you want them to uh, invest money in and you know invest like a say invest uh, 20 lakhs in production right which is like a small amount you know considering uh, most of these clients budgets but still you're trying to sell them on a film you're essentially what you're asking them to do is hey this is the creative vision i had for your brand you know and i would like you to take a bet on me you know i would like you to bet on my idea right and trust me that it is going to be good for your brand and um what you are asking them to do in return is invest money in your idea and this kind of a thing happens uh, you know either when the idea is so brilliant and it's so apparent that you know <coughs> the client is immediately sold on it or you know when you have built a good relationship between the agency that you're working in and uh, the people who are in the client side when there is a certain amount of trust right and um, the reality is that a lot of times even with all these things your ideas may not go through right your big ideas may not go through 
So the last part, the most important part about copywriting is persevering. You know, it's about um, saying, okay, it's fine if this film didn't go through. Tomorrow is another day. I'm gonna try again. You know, and it's just about sleeping that off and waking up the next morning. Uh, you know, and honestly, um, a lot of people have like even I do uh, a lot of uh, dry periods, a lot of lulls in your creativity where you know. there might be you know a, a two week period where you're not feeling creatively inspired where you're not feeling motivated you know where you have some kind of writer's block right um you have to persevere through that too you know it because um advertising is an industry which takes up like a lot of your time you know we work late nights um you know uh, some of us get very little sleep during the week right um but yeah again that all what you have to persevere through right and if you're not feeling that inspired you take you know a few days off and you go do something right you do something in your spare time you engage in a hobby right and you come back so yeah that is essentially what copywriting is all about uh now we'll get into like um the most crucial part of it which is like what is uh, you know a digital copywriter's work out for right earlier i mentioned that you know we do everything from say posts on a brand um account you know on social media to like a digital film that will go on youtube and be promoted and everything right so yeah let's just see um you know so this is uh, social media content i will use like a few good examples um you know from uh, brands that is seen online you know swiggy is really good with their um social media content it's super relatable it's almost like they run their brand page like it's um, like i mean the most successful pages if you ask me on on the internet are meme pages right and meme pages are successful because they are relatable to their audience the audience that you know whether it's engineering memes uh, you know engineering memes the engineers will relate to right and that's why they follow their account or you know uh, uh there's like i mean nine gag is like it's just funny content so it's got like a very broad audience right but you know medical college memes you'll see like a lot of these uh, you see i mean uh, there's a uh, meme page that i follow uh, called you know uh, dank memes malayalam right and that is exclusively kerala specific content right so they know their target audience they know who they're talking to so um as when you're managing social media content for a brand we take lessons from uh, meme pages that are there online right and we try to understand okay who is our audience who is following us here you know what kind of content do they want to see on a day to day basis what will make them laugh uh, what is going on in their lives what is relevant to them right and this is just a great example from swiggy um so if you all were familiar you know this is when pubg got banned right now the ban is getting unbanned but yeah um this was when pubg actually got banned right and uh, as we all know like the ban was like a weapon in pubg right that is quite popular um and yeah it's you know it's about uh, swiggy was uh, swiggy was launching its grocery service so it's about you know saying okay now you can order groceries in swiggy and uh, time to use span to actually cook right so it's just a great example of using uh, something that is happening in the moment you know and often these creatives are turned out you know really quickly they turned out really quickly so because the news of pubg getting banned will max to max be relevant for a 24 to 36 hour cycle right so it's about within that time reacting really quickly to the news right and you know uh, thinking of a creative idea that makes sense in that angle you know yeah and the next part of our job and this is honestly a little bit of a mundane part that we still have to deal with it's not the most interesting work uh but it can still be an exercise in you know just pure writing right so it's essentially these ad banners different kinds of ad banners that you see that chase you around on any website that you go on right um or it could even be the kind of um banners that pop up when you suppose you search for you know <clears throat> suppose you search for a laptop right from hp you will see immediately ads popping up from you know who you will see ads popping up from you know i mean you won't see any ads popping up from apple because 
Yeah, but you'll see essentially like a bunch of Acer ads, Asus ads, you know, Lenovo ads just popping up, right? So on search. So on some of that work can be done by copywriters uh, themselves, especially, you know, so copywriters and designers get together to put these creators together for the brand. And um, then, you know, we distribute it across uh, the internet. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I'm going to play this. I, I doubt whether it's going to be audible. Um, Ma'am, could you confirm if it's audible? I'm going to play it right now. Yeah, just play it, Sham. We'll see. Yeah. Is it audible? Mm, I can't really. No. Not to me. Ruthika, what about you? No, ma'am. It's not audible, ma'am. Yeah. There's okay. an option, uh, option switch to audio. When you're sharing your screen, there's an option switch to audio. If you click there, maybe it will be audible. All right. I'm just going to try that. I'm yeah. just going to try it. Mm, share content. Yes, below over there you will get an option where you got it. Thank you, computer sound. This option, yes. Oh, so the issue is I'm using my headphones to uh, take care of the audio and it might not work when I'm working on, I mean, it might not work when I'm using my headphones. Could I send the link across to um, uh, someone there and could you just project this ad for me? Would that work? Yeah, what you can do is, Sham, put it in the uh, chat box, then Rutika can play it for you. All right, I don't think I have access to a chat box over here. I'll uh, send it across on WhatsApp. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Lokesh. I can also share. This is Yeah, Lokesh, just uh, sort this out, please. One second, I'm just sharing it. Mr. Sham, you can share it with me. I'll be forwarding it. All right. Thank you. Just shared it. Yeah, I've received it. Wait, I'll just pay that. Yeah. Give me a moment. Yeah. I'm going to go on mute. I'll, it's just essentially um, what it is is a digital advertising, like a digital film that uh, an academy recently did around the IPL season. Which is just, yeah, it was appreciated by everyone being incredibly relevant and a good piece of work. So, yeah, I thought it'd be a good example for the digital film. Let's do. Give me a moment, I'll share it. Okay. 
Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Acceleration magnet. Is it audible, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Student, log, is IPL se kya sikha? Gravity ko torna sikha, speed and distance jodna sikha, momentum, acceleration, magnetic induction sikha, Darwin's evolution sikha, Newton's law of motion sikha, combustion, conduction and volcanic eruption sikha, melting point of metal sikha, boiling point of kettle sikha, theory of collision sikha, vision ka precision sikha. Right angle, triangle, Pythagoras theorem sikha, battle of Pani for sand. Movement of tectonic sikha, litmus test ka magic sikha, outer space ki mystery sikhi, milky way ka, are, 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 are. X sikha, Y sikha, circle ka pie sikha, vigyan bhukol sikha, dunia hai gold sikha, lessons by heart sikha, science, commerce, art sikha, math sikha, stand sikha, har cheez ka hack sikha, or impossible ka crack sikha. Uh, thanks for playing that, man. Uh, yeah, so essentially, um, you know, uh, you mind if I, I'll go back to projecting, right? Sham, you can turn on your camera. I have been trying to turn on my camera. The thing is, uh, my computer's camera isn't responsive. I think it's crashed for some reason. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to projecting, right? Yeah. So, um, essentially, you know, what I intended to show uh, with that is uh, the kind of work we do within, you know, when we do digital films, right? It's not just about, uh, I hope this doesn't start from the start. Yeah. So, it's not just about, um, you know, uh, what is you know, the most um, relevant thing for my brand, what is the most relevant thing for my audience. It's also about, you know, uh, what is happening in the world right now, right? And Unacademy did this because they have uh, this proposition called Let's Crack It. And uh, for them, uh, so it's all about cracking exams, it's all about cracking concepts, right? And um, what they wanted to do is, you know, uh, since they were a big uh, sponsor for the IPL and everything, since they were a partner for the IPL, um, they wanted to see, you know, uh, they wanted to explore the space of learning in a way that is, um, relevant to the IPL and uh, fun to the students and to their audience, right? This is just a great example of, you know, um, the kind of uh, digital films you can do. Of course, you'll find a lot of examples apart from this. I think um, one of the works, in fact, that the current agency I'm working at uh, uh, did is this uh, film for HP called uh, Amma Ki Diwali, which was done two years back which uh, still finds, um, you know, uh, which still is shared by multiple pages on Facebook and Instagram, you know, it's shared by, um, uh, it's shared by multiple personalities, you know, uh, on these platforms who have a lot of followers uh, because uh, it's an ad that is so relevant because it's, a, it's not just an ad, it's a piece of content that you are doing for the brand, right? Um, and unlike, you know, a, a television commercial where uh, all you want is for your, uh, to, for your ad to uh, come, come up uh, between these two TV programs where, you know, uh, and you just want someone to watch it. Uh, when it comes to digital, you just don't want people to watch your ad. You want people to share your ad, right? And that only happens when, you know, it is something that the audience can relate to, like I said before, right? It's about, it's about, um, you know, making, uh, you know, essentially a piece of content that people can share and people can see themselves, in, right? And this video was, you know, shared, you know, widely by um, students who saw it and, you know, they, um, they were quite delighted by how, you know, different concepts like tectonic plates and melting point and, you know, uh, gravity, right angle, triangle, and everything was connected to... <coughs> was connected to um, a game of IPS, right? 
and yeah it's just one of like the best examples that i could find from recent memory right uh and all right i'm just going to go ahead yeah another uh, thing that we do is um so i'm sure like i'm sure quite a few of you are using instagram by now and instagram has a lot of these filters right um so it's essentially like a you know uh, so you can so you can use filters you can use augmented reality right so augmented reality is when um you know you are placing a layer upon an image that is already there right for example in this image uh, in this example what is already there the reality is um uh, the lady face and um, the augmentation the change that is being uh, brought to it is essentially the shade of her lipstick right now this is one of the earliest examples i could find of brands uh, using augmented reality um, you know filters to uh, sell their product right because essentially what they're saying is you don't need to go to a store you don't need to try it on with a sample that is sitting there on the shelf to see um, what you would look like with that particular shade of lipstick when you can try it from the very comfort of your home you know and um, yeah i mean essentially you can have a product trial without even having gone to a store or without even having held uh, an actual lipstick in your hand right <coughs> of course um, a lot of brands use ar filters uh, especially like instagram filters in very different ways for example netflix might do a filter where you know you have those filters right which disney character are you and it flips it flips maybe it gives you winnie the pooh maybe it gives you mickey mouse right maybe it gives you eeyore or whatever it is right which disney princess are you right maybe it gives you cinderella maybe it gives you ariel right now um a lot of brands use um especially when they're making content right netflix might do something like you know which netflix character are you right it could just flip 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 you know um i'm sure you all are familiar with what i'm talking about if yeah yeah so augmented reality filters is like another huge uh, you know it's another uh, and here it's not like um, as writers we'll be doing a lot of writing for these filters but you know say we uh, i mean an important part of our job is ideation as well right so suppose we get an idea for a brand you know this ar filter is worth doing it and then we can you know suggest it to our clients you know see if they take it up and yeah is this falls largely with the ideation part of our job uh, we work on apart from that we work on websites for clients you know um like if you go to like and say i'll actually take you all through a website that i seriously love for how um user friendly and how interesting it is it's um this uh, is um is the apple india website and in fact it's the iphone 12 pro page right and it's like when you say uh, it's not an ordinary website in the sense that it's super interactive you know with every scroll you are doing something on the page i hope this is visible see it's about it's so it's not just about you know setting up a website filling it with information and everything right it's about how do you give your customers a journey on that right because essentially it's an online it could be an online store or it could just be some you know in the case of apple it, it is an online store for them right it's not just a place they come for information so how do you um just like you control the environment within a store you want your customers to have the best experience they will walk right in how do you do the same with a website that's essentially what we solve for right uh so yeah there's websites uh, we work with virtual reality as well so um uh, this is essentially like you know um your uh, vr is essentially you have your vr headsets these days and you have brands that are giving uh, you know uh, virtual experiences um whenever they find it relevant this hasn't become that big in india yet but we are hoping it soon will um influencer content now this is like a huge uh, part of what we do because um like i said online uh, i mean on- online when we are doing advertising it's not just you know um the more um 
the more branded it seems the less people uh, will watch it the less people will connect to it the less people will share it which is why we partner with <coughs> we partner with celebrities uh, and we're not just talking about celebrities in the traditional sense of the word uh, you know where it is either a bollywood star or a cricket star right uh, when i say celebrity i mean um, you know anyone on the internet who uh, whose followers um, are the kind of followers you you want your brand to have right so um, for a brand like lakme it could be someone who is following um, a model or a, you know or uh, someone who uh, you, you know a uh, someone who does fashion tutorials on youtube right it could be someone who is following them right uh, so we do a lot of influencer content where we partner with um, in fact i'd like to show you all a good example for this um if you remember um pepsi had put out this film a long time like i mean it seems like a long time back but i think it happened this february about a uh, swag se solo with salman khan and everything right so i just like to show you like a few examples of the influencer content um that pepsi did right that you'll find on their page but you'll also find on the page of these celebrities right so yeah it, it, this is essentially like a version of swag se solo that they did with uh multiple cricketers and online celebrities you know i again i don't think the audio here will be visible i mean oh, sorry audible but it's essentially um you know uh you have all these people who are doing the same thing you know it started with salman khan it's this kind of a uh, thread that started right uh, just asking people no handshake to salam namaste and you know be swag se solo because it's all about um, social distancing right so again it's about using influencers using you know people who are relevant to your brand to you know engage so you had used vendra Ch- uh, chahal also in uh, you know who was part of it and you had multiple celebrities who do <coughs> who doing it right so yeah uh so i mean a big part of what we do is also writing this influencer content sometimes it's just an influencer who you send your product to right and um, you know it's a makeup tutorial it's an influencer who does makeup tutorials and um, they do uh, they use all kinds of products right so lakme might want to send them you know a kit of their latest products to try that out and <coughs> essentially yeah it's um, the logic we expect from there is uh, monkey see monkey do so just like you know um, you see someone online you know you're following them because you want to imitate that kind of lifestyle uh, so by plugging your brand in there you're hoping to increase um, affinity for your brand you're hoping that people will like your brand right and yeah and a lot more so um, this is barely like scratching the surface because um, what a lot of brands have also been doing is um, you know in fact i'd like to share an other example on chat just to show you how far uh, you know the boundaries of digital advertising can go uh yeah on the and okay Yeah. Uh could I share this link also on chat? Uh Ritika ma'am. Yes, you can. Yeah, I'm just going to Yes. I yeah. uh, actually have got another one which is quite interesting. It's quite
I'm just going to stop sharing. Just a minute, I'll share it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sending it across. Yeah. So this ad that I'm about to show is just an example of how far, you know, you can take a digital idea, um, integrate it in the real world, because there's honestly, there's no rules to the game, right? Um, while there are these formats that certain brands uh, use, you can every once in a while you see this piece of work that truly defies all boundaries it defies all you know um everything that has been done before it it uses um what is what the possibilities of the internet in a way that is truly unique you know and never been done before so yeah the whopper detour is a kind of it's the prime example you know which is spoken about in advertising agencies like throughout the world so yeah i'll just yeah, let Ritika ma'am present it. Yeah, can you uh, can you see my screen? Students, yes. can you see my screen? Yeah, is it audible? Yes. 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 Okay. Hi, we're just here to order the Whopper. Whopper. This is McDonald's. Yeah. And uh, we don't have. We don't have. But you don't have the Burger King Whopper here. We don't have Whoppers here. This isn't Burger King. No, no, no. The app for Burger King. You see it? I believe you are here, but we don't have that. So we can come to McDonald's and get a Whopper, yeah? Maybe in another city. says buy a one cent Whopper at McDonald's. That's crazy. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my Whopper. Have you heard of the crazy Whopper deal? Yeah, everybody's been asking, but like, we never heard of it, ever. Can you do a Whopper Junior? They probably can make that. It wouldn't be as good as Burger King would, to be honest with you. No, oh, that's Burger King. This is McDonald's, sweetie. Well, I pushed on here, and it said order a Whopper for a penny at McDonald's. That's a lie. That's a fake thing. Burger King. Right. Four blocks to your left. Right. Um, thanks for playing that, ma'am. Uh, so, essentially, what um, you know they did with that idea is um, you can use. Uh, so, when you're talking about the capabilities of digital advertising, you're not just talking about platforms. You're not just talking about you know uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You know, you are essentially talking about what can you do with the internet? And that is a huge question to answer, right? Because the possibilities are literally limitless. So what they did there is they had um, an app, uh, right? They had the Burger King app, which, uh, which tracks your location because it delivers to your location, right? And um, they also have uh, data they, that they collected from, you know, across the US. So this is done in the United States. Uh, they had data that they collected from across the US of uh, different McDonald's stores and where all they are located, right? So what they did is essentially any time you drove within 600 feet of uh, a McDonald's store and you tried to order a burg a, uh, you know, a Whopper a burger from uh, Burger King on your uh, Burger King app, uh, it would detect that you are within 600 feet of a McDonald's store and give you a coupon, it will give you a discount code that will essentially let you buy that one cent to offer. So it is literally, um, you know, and as we all know, McDonald's is pretty much Burger King's biggest competitor and probably the leader in the segment too. So this is Burger King, um, you know, playing as um, the second, the second largest player in the industry. It's taking like um, a pot shot at the leader, you know, and yeah, it's, 
you know they have been known for these kind of stunts and uh, for using digital for using the digital medium in a very uh, you know in a very innovative manner so yeah essentially what they've used that is like a version of maps uh, combined with um, you know data drawing from google maps combined with their burger king app to give like a discount that you know somehow merges a real world experience and a digital experience together all into one right i see uh, uh, sham that really sounds very very interesting that everything yeah. now basically i am learning from you now i taught you once upon a time and now i am your student uh learning from you uh, this wonderful and magical world of advertising there's so many things i didn't know so that i'm glad, i'm sure all our students also here ha- are partaking of the same uh, information uh yeah. sham i just wanted to interrupt and say that uh, the children have a list of questions and we already 10:47 uh so okay. i think we'll get on with the round of questions and i think a lot of your subject matter will be covered there also so sure thing, ma'am. uh just can we give me 2 minutes to run through to the end i am almost there. yeah 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 we'll do that and then maybe you can come on the phone so we can see your handsome face for along for sure for sure yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah yeah so yeah okay so why am i doing this okay now we are going to get to the very real part of personal part of advertising as to why i am doing this right Mr. so sham uh, have you shared yeah. your screen because we can't see your screen oh damn one second i'm just going to share it. thank you thank you i forgot when i was switching <laughs> to share the screen um it's visible now right yeah it's visible now thank you yeah so now we're going to get to the real so now we're going to get to the real part of advertising why am i doing this right this person is for me so essentially advertising for me if this is like a venn diagram advertising for me falls right in the middle you know where and i put an emphasis here on decent right because when you start out in advertising it doesn't pay much right it's one of those industries where they expect the passion to pay your bills and you know for a while uh, because um, to start out in advertising like uh, what i ended up doing is a lot of internships you know um, they were uh, they were paid but they didn't pay you much right and even a starting salary um, in advertising as a copywriter you'll find that it doesn't come anywhere close to you know uh, a career in medicine or you know whether you start a software engineering right because those are lucrative growing fields and in advertising uh, it takes a while for you to build your name and for you to start demanding more and more of the places you work at and yeah so it's an intersection between a decent salary that would let me survive on it and um, the chance to write and ideate right so you can't expect to go into advertising wanting to you know start saving from your own right because um while the salary will let you pay for your, pay for your own rent pay for your own bills it uh, barely lets you do anything beyond that for the first 2 uh, 3 years at least and then you see growth <clears throat> what is my biggest lesson from advertising all right so this is um yeah so this in mind so uh, when i was thinking about you know what is my biggest takeaway i was thinking you know there is a line someone said somewhere i don't know who said it good artist copy great artist feel then i realized that if steve jobs said that pablo picasso said that good artists borrow and great artists steal right but then i realized that pa- what pablo picasso actually said steve jobs is misquoting him or pablo picasso actually said was lesser artists borrow great artists steal but he took inspiration from another quote that you know uh, composer igor stravinsky had said a good composer does not imitate he steals right and T.S. Eliot had said it even further before in like a much more um, drawn out <laughs> way, which is essentially, you know, immature poets imitate, mature poets steal, bad poets deface what they take, and good poets make it into something better or at least something different. The good poet wells his text into a whole, uh, into a whole of feeling which is unique, utterly different than that from which it is torn. Now, what I'd like to say with this is, you know, this is clearly like uh, the sentiment. as i search for it i literally came across this as i was googling this for the presentation i had no idea there were so many people so many artists out there who were saying exactly the same thing right and um it's 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 an it's a rather ironic example because here they seem to have literally just imitated from each other and said the same thing there was no stealing going on but um what they mean i think the best example here is you know what you go stravinsky said you know it's simple it's like you know uh 
imitating is essentially you know you see something else that someone has done before you you have no original take on it and it's just copy paste right it's um it's uh, it's not um, the most cre- you won't be doing anything creative there you will be doing the technical part of writing but um, you know there is no personal input that is coming from you there is no you are not imbuing it with any of your experiences with you know your life experiences or some original idea that you had right whereas um, if i can take an idea that i saw you know stealing is taking inspiration right so if i can take an idea that i read about in some book you know which is so recently i was reading this book um it's uh, a short story called 11 um talks about you know uh, no one is 11 so suppose you are 11 you are not 11 you are also 10 you are also 9 you are also 8 you are also 7 and what they mean is that at any given point so i am 23 right now uh, but i am not just 23 i am also 22 21 what they mean is i i am a collection of my life experiences up to this point right and i could regress to being a 2 year old who wants to just uh, you know be hugged and who cries in situations that cause me stress right so i may regress to my 2 year old self i may regress to my 13 year old self who is super jealous and competitive all the time you know so it's essentially an insight right it's an idea and so now can i take that idea and then i apply it for some brand somewhere right so now that feeling whereas imitating is just you know making a copy of an ad i've seen somewhere before and this takes me to my best idea till date right so the inspiration that i had for this was this concept called kintsugi uh now kintsugi is like i'm not going to play the video i'll just take you to see through it kintsugi is the art uh, of you know it's a japanese uh, tradition of mending what is broken with golden lacquer you know with resin right as you can see in this bowl there are these lines it's been broken and then you fix it back together the philosophy here is that once something is broken you know as is popular in western cultures you don't just throw it away you fix it right and this is something that we see a lot in eastern cultures we see it in india as well right but here it's gotten to an art form gotten to the point of being an art form where <coughs> an object becomes more beautiful and more valuable because it's got these golden lines running across it joining the spots that were once broken right now i was thinking would this be a great idea to talk about you know a great metaphor to talk about mental health you know uh, and mental healing and self love you know because um that's been a big talking point for conversations right and i was wondering if you could use kintsugi as a metaphor for a brand you know that i was working on at the time um to talk about healing and self love and you know embracing you know and wanting to you know not forget about the trauma or forget about the experience uh, you know bad experiences that may have shaped you but learning to heal from that you know and letting that um, you know accepting yourself and accepting all the flaws that you may have right so i was thinking you know could kintsugi be used as a metaphor for talking about it right i had grand ideas but what was the execution the execution was it didn't happen <clears throat> it got rejected by the client the client loved it for some reason uh, you know the client loved the idea but for some reason it never saw the day of light um but that doesn't mean you know uh, i'm still not proud of the idea it is just something that um, you know uh, and this is like like i said it's a reality of advertising right the people here who have been pitch who pitch who have pitched hundreds of ideas in a year and they probably see 10 or 20 of them get through right and that's what is my second biggest lesson which i've already said before but i felt like i had to say it again which is persevere because you know you can't get bummed out because your um, idea didn't get through um but yeah you have to you know wake up the next day try to motivate yourself try to be self motivated and be creative and believe that your best work is ahead of you um things i do not like about copywriting uh the long hours like i've said before the very little pay that you get at the start um moral conflicts now this is a bit of an interesting one because um i have been asked to work on so uh, personally i know people who will not work on cigarette brands because um it is something that is harmful to society right and there is advertising is um advertising is a tool it is uh, essentially asking people to use a certain product and um if it is used in a manner that is not moral right that is not looking at society is good it can be used for evil just like you know um marlboro used to advertise you know their campaigns were quite popular in the us until they became banned right 
and you know uh, right now um, you know there's still the question would i work on a brand that say uh, talking about online betting because i know betting is a bit of an addictive behavior you know would i work if, uh, would i work on a brand which is talking about online rummy right because or even for that matter would i work on a brand like fair and lovely in a country where you know uh, the idea of fairness is linked with racism and linked with self hatred right would i sell fair and lovely to a house where uh, they can barely you know uh, meet the electricity bills at the end of the month but i'll still they'll still buy fair and lovely because they believe it gives them a chance for brighter tomorrow am i not cheating them right the, these are where moral conflicts come in advertising and it is very real because i know people who will not work on certain brands because it doesn't align with their moral compass right and <coughs> lots of dead ends so you may get an idea you might not know you did exactly how you see it but you'll realize that you know that idea doesn't go anywhere or once you bounce it off someone you know your excitement will fade away and you know they'll point out the flaws in the idea but that is part of life right and that is where you know the technology comes in first of all now this is just a general overview of a digital advertising agency there's account management who talk directly to the client these are the people person yeah i think that's all yeah these are pe- uh, these are people who are really skilled at managing other people so they manage the expectations of the client and they manage timelines they see whether the creative team is actually working or you know uh, you know whether they're sticking to you know the deadlines that we have right and most of the deadlines we have are quite terrible but yeah uh, then there is strategy and planning whose role is to research 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 they'll research into the platforms that we're working on so if facebook comes out with facebook re- i mean in whatsapp a year back uh, uh, came back with stories right <coughs> instagram got stories two years back now all these platforms linkedin twitter recently introduced a version of stories called fleet right now all these platforms that we're working on are also constantly evolving so that is what strategy and planning does they look into the platforms that we'll be working on and the possibilities of digital media and um, they'll also look into our audience you know they'll do some research for our brand what is our audience looking for to right and what can our brand say so they'll do a lot of strategic thinking a lot of plan right um then there's your creative team which has you know your copywriters and it has copyright uh, so copywriters the writing team essentially and the design and the design team we both ideate together and you know we try to complement and work in sync with each other and then there's a technology team who will work on developing apps who will work on developing websites you know and yeah essentially that so they do then there's the data and insights team so <clears throat> this is a bit of a tricky one for me to explain also because their work seems so <coughs> technical and yet so essential to a digital advertising agency which is um now suppose um you know uh you released uh you released an ad uh which is garnering you know suppose you want to release an ad about uh say the growing um you know the fear of corona virus in society right now or say you want to release an ad about how people miss going back home to their family on uh, to their family this diwali right now um so that's an idea that we have right now we have to see whether that sentiment is actually really out there so what the data and insights team uh, do is they have all these tools that they employ to track the conversations happening across you know any corner of the internet they have like crawlers that essentially go and pick up this information right and they find out what the volume of conversation is you know how many people are searching for flight tickets back home right how many people are posting you know hashtag fomo stories on instagram you know and putting up pictures of their family right so <clears throat> essentially what they do is they look at people's online behavior to te- to give us an insight into what they're thinking and what they're feeling you know and that's essentially what they do it's it's a you know it's a very technical thing but yeah more and more you see that uh, creativity stems from data and insights you know creativity stems from what people are feeling at the current time and we can we have an insight into what they're feeling at the current time we don't just have to um assume it then there is online reputation management now um suppose you complain you know ola cabs you know accidentally charges you a cancellation fee of uh, 25 rupees and you don't want to pay it <clears throat> now you can try to settle it on their app or the best thing you can do is go on twitter and tweet out to ola and then you know you see that ola has responded to you you know someone has responded from ola's account you know sir are you all right you know what is your um, how can we solve your complaint and things like that right 
or uh, it could be the opposite as well like this one time i had put out a tweet which said i am so glad i'd rather know people who would stock restaurants on zomato than people than friends on facebook right now this is a positive tweet about i didn't think it would be a positive tweet about zomato but they clearly saw it that way and they ended up retweeting my tweet right so they had a data and insights team that was listening <coughs> and track that i use the word zomato and then they read my tweet and then they realized it is in a positive context which is why they decided to re- retweet my <coughs> tweet right so that is done by the retweeting or the replying is done by the online reputation management team right and then there's your media team essentially you know like i said earlier we have all these ad banners that go out to multiple places with multiple corners of the internet this is kind of similar like um, uh, you have a team that buys like in mainline advertising we have a television commercial that comes between uh, you know konvenega crorepati and the next you know between uh, you know an interval in konvenega crorepati you have a team that buys that time you know buys 10 15 seconds of that time similarly here you have a team that buys you know um space on you know website right and distributes your ad and ensures that the right audience is seen so yeah um so i yeah, took a little longer than expected but yeah that brings me to the end of this presentation i just switched to my phone yeah thank you thank you so much you can log in from my phone that's the magic of it when Yeah, yes. I think Sam, you can come on to the mobile, and in the meanwhile, we'll uh, Utika, you can uh, proceed with the uh, uh, questions. Yes. So our first question will be from uh, Vedanshi. Vedanshi, are you ready, dear? Yes. Vedanshi, we'll just wait a minute. Let's see whether Sam is or not. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, that's good. Uh, now I can see Sham. You haven't changed much in these years. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. It's just the change has been incredibly slow. It's just <laughs> there was one, there was one hit of puberty, and then nothing much after that point. It was just like that. <laughs> good. Right. So uh, let's start with Anshi. Uh, and Sham, keep your answers a little brief because I think we really exceeded time. And yeah. uh, so let's start with Anshi. Good morning, sir. My name is Vedanshi. I am from Grade Five. So my question is, what motivated you to choose advertising as a career option? Right. So um, what for me it was essentially a process of elimination. So after ten grade, I decided I didn't want to do science, <laughs> and you know because I wasn't that interested in it. I wasn't interested in physics and chemistry. I was quite interested in biology. Um, but yeah, I decided I didn't want to do science because of that. and then um for 11th and 12th i tried doing commerce i found it super interesting but you know again maybe i realized it's not my cup of tea i enjoyed you know during that time i actually enjoyed you know writing plays you know appearing in plays along with you know rupa ma'am was guy was there for us always guiding us through it we part of the drama club we had a lot of fun and then i realized you know, that you know maybe telling stories is something i want to try you know and um now i still want to do you know telling stories is still my primary motivation um i'm kind of like advertising is a good way to like uh, for me to tell a story for a brand and get paid for it reliably uh, but yeah, i mean the long term game is to shift to some other kind of writing you know uh, tv screen writing or something like that maybe i'll write a book i don't know i'm just it's the future's bro i mean it's open and it's you know there for seizing so yeah essentially this is what motivated i think uh, sham your journey in writing started with purely professional if i can say that <laughs> <laughs> it this yeah that is that is that is truly one of the pieces where i stole instead of imitating yeah to the first <laughs> piece yeah right. yeah thanks is that all thank that? you sir yeah thanks very much next aditya is there my name is aditya and my question to you is how can the youth change and contribute to the field of advertising uh so we don't have to change uh we are already changing it right so uh, the first when you see mainland advertising right which is where they do print ads and you know what do you, basically what you see on newspapers right what do you see in between television uh, tv shows right um now that uh, traditional part of advertising is being run by uh, people who are much older and much more experienced than us but the first agency that i was working at in mumbai was a digital advertising agency and there the average age of the office was 27 right and 
I had joined there at the age of 20. There were already interns there who were 19 and 18, right? And we are already there. We are changing it just by, you know, our online behavior, you know, by the kind of content that we consume online, right? Um, now you will see that Fair and Lovely changed their name from Fair and Lovely to um, something else. Was it a Fair and... Uh, yeah, essentially, um, you know, if we, we got Fair and Lovely to change their name. You know, for, uh, so to I think it was fair and lovely name change. I'm just gonna Google that. Oh, Glue and lovely. lovely. Yeah, yeah. We got that. We got them to change their name to Glue and Lovely, right? And that's because we are there online. We are, we are, we are. You know, activists are online activism. Our generation is already there, right? And they realize that you know, um, promoting ideas of fairness is not gonna get us to sell to this audience in India. So we might as well change our game. And we are already impacting that. You know, whether it is with ideas, you know, whether um, because honestly, you can't expect um, someone from traditional advertising who used to write print ads to come and make memes, right? Because that's the language of the internet. That's someone only who was born into the internet is going to understand, right? And I still feel like I adopted the internet, you know, somewhere in my teens, right? But I am so looking forward to the kind of work that will come, you know, with the ne in the next 10, 15 years where you have a generation that was born with smartphones in their hand, right? And that's often seen as a negative thing. But it's growth, right? It's change. Um, we have to get to, we have to get used to the idea of using these devices in a responsible manner, right? And yeah, I mean, it's it's only going to get you know more innovative from here, and it's we don't have to change. We are already doing the change essentially. Yeah, I think that is really good, uh, Sham. And uh, the generation Aditya that you are uh, you belong to is the Z generation. So I think uh, all of you who are attending this uh, session must read up on the Z generation and see that you are and what uh, Sham put in a very important point that use that mobile and your internet responsibly and the sky is not the limit for you and where you can go from there. So uh, you are lucky to be part of this generation with this kind of technology in your hand, right? Yes, Rutika. Yes, thank you so much. We'll go ahead, Sanya. A oh, very good morning, sir. I am Sanya from grade 9 and I would like to know, do companies make advertisements to spread social awareness or just to promote their products by stimulating emotions of their customers? Sorry, could you repeat that last part of the question? Do they uh, uh, do advertisements to promote social awareness or to sell their products by? You're on mute. Sanya, you're on mute. Sonia, by, you're stimul on mute. by stimulating emotions of their customers. Right. So it's a bit of a tricky question, right? Because um, what we essentially do can be seen um, in a way as a kind of manipulation of emotions, right? So the thing is, um, <coughs> honestly, this is this is the moral part of advertising that we kind of struggle with, right? Where you have to appeal to your audience in a way that is relevant to them, you know, um, to essentially get, actually, could I share an ad that would be a great example for this? This is like a great, um, uh, I think this would help me, um, uh, Gillette, the best man can be. So it is a bit of both. Um, Sanya, to answer your question, like in a short manner, but I'd actually like it if uh, Ritika, ma'am, could I send, send it to you on WhatsApp? Uh, so yes, you, um, sure. If you could put it up, that would be great because this is like a prime example of an ad that did both at once. You know, it's not an only like a bad ad about social awareness will, um, you know, uh, it will look bad, you know, and it will have no impact on mindsets or it won't start a conversation. Um, and an ad that is just about social awareness might hurt the brand's image and may not uh, increase sales, right? Which is why the brand is putting money. The brand is not the government, right? Um, you know, it's not interested just in public wealth, right? Can you see so, my yeah. screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is it? We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. 
you can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? <laughs> what I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. But she says and there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right oh, way. Bro, not cool, not cool. Some already are. In ways big. Yo, men. And small. I am strong. Ow. But some is not enough. So how do we treat each other, okay? Okay. Because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. So this is a prime example of an ad. Um, you know, Gillette has that has had that tagline for ages, right? The best man can get, right? And that's talking about their product. But here they changed it. They put a mirror in front of all men around the world, and you know, it asked them, you know, what is the best you can be, right? Now this ad got hated by men. Men did not like it. Men was like, Gillette is a man's brand. Why are you criticizing men, right? But um, now, uh, but it started a conversation, right? As many people, as many men you had hating this ad, you had so many um, men and women, you know, who understood, um, you know, the kind of movement this was born, born out of. This was born out of when Me Too started in the US, right? That's when this came up. And, um, you know, so you had enough and more positive conversation happening around the ad. And so that's around the social awareness part of it, right? What Gillette is trying to do at the end of the day, they want to position themselves in a way that gets them more sales, right? And now this dark reality of it is that it's, um, especially in older families, it's the women who do the grocery shopping, right? And it's not the man who picks up the razor. It's the it's the woman of the household who does that. Now, what they got is they started an interesting conversation around social awareness. They looped in women into the conversation. And then they saw that their sales increased because their razors were being picked up more because women saw this as a brand that stood with their values, that stood with feminism, right? And so it is a sword, right? Um, you are being super cynical and you are exploiting people in one way, but you are also trying to start a conversation on the other end. And um, for a brand, it's about doing both, right? It's about selling while, you know, communicating a message of social importance. Um, there may be times when you work... Um, with an NGO, right? Or with um, a governmental organization to spread their message, you know, like um, uh, the stop smoking ads, which are done by ad agencies, right? Or uh, things like that, right? Where, um, you know, it's whether you're working uh, for online safety among youngsters and you do an ad for that and things like that, right? Where it will be purely about social awareness. <coughs> but that is because you're not working for a company there, you're working for an NGO or you're working with a government to do it. So, yeah, Sanya, I hope that answered your question. You have to do both. You have to exploit people, people's emotions and you have to, you know, you can try and bring around social change. Not every brand tries to bring around social change. Some brands just go about it trying to be funny and, you know, um, trying to make people laugh, trying to get people to share their content. But yeah, there's both in ads that try to build yeah. social events. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Right. Era, Era, I hope you're ready. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Jasmine and I am from Read It. I would like to know what is your marketing strategy and what impact did it have on the public? Hmm. So, um, I, I mean, I think one of the most effective campaigns that we ran um, was um, uh, this film that we did around mental health for... Um, one of the corporate lines that we had, which was a star TV program. Okay. Uh, so, and this is not um, the channel star. This is the corporate star, which owns all the channels and the company. Right. So um, we did a campaign for them around mental health, which, you know, um, which is about, you know, people um, looking at people and saying, Oh, you don't look like you could be, uh, you know, uh, you could be suffering from something. 
you know oh you don't look like it you know uh, there's that um, uh, kind of stereotype right or oh, someone's like um, as long as they look fine they're not suffering from anything right so we were addressing that kind of a stigma that exists within indian society and i mean it was written by my creative uh, director at the time and she wrote it in a beautiful way and it was shot well and it was moving and it was executed well and i'd say that that had quite a good um, social impact it got conversations going on on twitter and everything um but one of the most effective campaigns that we ran like so this was on like a broader metric we didn't want to try and sell anything we just wanted to position the brand as a brand that stands for something right one of the most effective campaigns that we ran was again for star tv uh, program when they had a writers program going on right and <coughs> effective that we essentially with our digital strategy and with our writing and with our creative prowess we managed to double the amount of applications they received as opposed to their previous year right which is something that happens very rarely like that kind of 100% right so yeah i mean we've got examples of like both here i i think if we have time we could show that mental health that but again only if we have time Uh, Tom, I think what you can do, you can send the links in the chat box or yeah. send to Rutika. Then later on, the kids we can share it with them. Sure. So we're running sure. out of time right now. Yes, Rutika, your next question. Ira, please go ahead. Hello, sir. I am Ira, and I'm from grade eight. And I would like to know what is the difference between marketing, sales, and advertising. that is that is a super interesting question right because i had the hardest time figuring out figuring it out until i actually reached college um so uh, sales is essentially um, you know it's person to person you know you build connections you are actively trying to sell it's a hard sell right it's um, if i'm selling <coughs> if i'm selling say an antivirus to an uh, to a large organization i'll go there in person and build a personal relationship right you have a sales team that um you know uh, will have monthly targets as to okay i have to sell these many units this month right and um i'll tell you in a very logical manner as to why my product is better right i'm not making an emotional appeal to you um so that is essentially what sales does and sales drives any organization right so an organization like gillette they will have their sales team their sales and distribution team their objective will be to get to as many stores as they can in india right and get their product on as many shelves as they can and see who is buying it see how many products should be in stock there see how much i should be producing right so um, one blade you know the uh, slightly cheaper blade might be selling more while a more expensive one will uh, sit on the shelf for a few months until it gets sold right so uh, a sales team works along with the production team and makes all these decisions and tries to push as much of your product out into the market as possible right it's a very uh, tactical function now um when it comes to marketing there's a lot that goes on within marketing it's not just advertising it is public relations it is um, you know it is um, press releases it's you know so suppose um, you know a marketing team has to work with say um, say tesla is coming out of the car tomorrow it won't just be the advertisement that they're doing for the car right they will uh, have elon musk come out do like a press conference be his usual weird quirky that kind of genius persona that he has you know um at the same time you will have multiple you know um rumors going around on the internet or oh, leaked images of the latest tesla right um so all this is done by a public relations team essentially no image is getting leaked it's the company which is leaking it so that the buzz is created around the release of a certain product right it comes out like with every with excuse me with every iphone's release you see oh leaked specs oh um this is going to be what it costs you know these are the estimates you know and things like that right so um yeah it's essentially that's done by the public relations team right so which functions within the marketing you know and advertising is a small part of the marketing team so um yeah it's it's like sales is a separate department marketing is a different thank you so separate department and advertising is a smaller function of marketing that was uh, very well put uh, sham uh, yeah <laughs> that's good yes next Mehak, please go ahead. Yes, Mehak. Rutika, get on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
we'll go ahead with uh, shivam shivam i hope you're there please go ahead shivam i am shivam from grade 7 and my question to you is do you believe that any publicity even bad publicity is good publicity um hi hi shivam that's a super interesting question right and no i don't think any publicity is good publicity i mean i think it works in certain cases right um as in the case of you know um the now soon to be uh, ex us president us trump i mean donald trump you know who um, like he is a prime example of a person who believes that any publicity is good publicity right where uh, it helps him actually the more you talk about him the more you analyze and the more you talk about his flaws and whatever he has to say um you see that you know the conversations around him increase and the awareness around him increases right so that is a case where any publicity is good publicity works it works in very weird scenarios it won't apply to brands because um for a brand uh, to be um bought like for you to buy a brand you wouldn't buy a brand simply because it's been in the news so um maggi getting banned was publicity right but that was bad publicity uh, people stopped buying maggi people stopped trusting maggi after that <coughs> which you know i think that allowed its market share to be eaten up by a few other brands you know that came in with noodles at the same time right you saw a patanjali launching it and everything which i mean ultimately patanjali's didn't pan out but you know you saw your chings and everything become bigger in the market at that time right so that was bad publicity for maggi and maggi had to fight that and maggi actually fought it well towards the end you know they built nostalgia oh maggi is back you know that kind of a thing but yeah um only good publicity only good publicity is good publicity as far as brands are concerned because it's not just about how many people know your name it's about knowing your name and associating it you with something good so that i would trust you enough to pick you up off the shelf and buy right thank you sir yeah rutina you can call mehak i think she was back yes mehak good morning sir my name is mehak on a grade 7 and my question to you is what qualities are needed to be a successfully in this field uh right um so would you mean as a copywriter within this field or like generally within digital advertising so because i think generally I think generally uh, uh in uh, digital, uh, digital. Yes. okay yes. so yeah i mean the best quality you can have like i said before is like um uh, being young right that's the best quality because uh that is the edge you have in this industry because uh yeah everyone else um they may be wiser than you in life but you know um pinterest better you know snapchat better you know the platforms better right and um you are always on your phone you are um you know what is trending on twitter before anyone else in your office does right so um it's essentially you need um you need uh, familiarity with social platforms because i was not on instagram until i was in college i downloaded instagram once i realized i was going to be in digital advertising and i realized i couldn't do a good job without it right and um similarly so you have to be on multiple social media platforms now i'm on reddit and you know all kinds of places you know where um, you actually won't find like a lot of people you know like it's not the most common places but yeah you still you know you need to be aware of as many social media uh, platforms and as many you, you need to be active on them so you know what's trending and um, another thing you need like is a lot of perseverance a lot of patience and you need to be willing to work alongside so third thing is you need to be willing to work alongside people you need to be willing to col- uh, collaborate and be open to other people's ideas because what i see especially with a lot of creative people is um i see that the uh, ones who are not as successful are not willing to take feedback are not willing to improve upon their ideas and they're not willing to consider another person's perspective right and at the end of the day not being uh, able to co- uh, collaborate with someone or to talk in a friendly manner to someone can in a very real way affect your job right so yeah it's these three things actually just being aware of social platforms um <coughs> being willing to collaborate and being uh, willing to persevere and you know be patient and know that you know your best days still ahead of you and being young and being yeah, yeah. <laughs> sham yeah right i think that's good uh, yes next question you will please go ahead you will good morning sir my name is jeevan and i am from grade 6 and my question to you is how <clears throat> how do you measure the effectiveness of an advertising campaign ha huh. that is an interesting question because um 
So it depends on what the um, objective of your campaign is, right? So some campaigns are not looking to sell you anything. They just want to create a conversation around, say, I mean, the film we did for Star on mental health and the other one that I was talking about, two very different metrics, right? So for one, <coughs> so one, for one, where we wanted to drive registrations towards a certain writer's program that was happening, right? So there you have these terms like uh, CTC, like click through, CTR click through rate, essentially how many people are clicking on your ad, how many people are viewing it. These will be relevant uh, throughout. But um, essentially, um, you know, an ad, uh, you know, um, the first campaign, which is around building a conversation around mental health, that will be considered successful based on how many people we have replying to our ad, based on how many people we have sharing our ad, based on how many people we have um, mentioning us, you know, using the right hashtag and things like that, right? So that is category A, where we want to build awareness, where we want to start a conversation, right? Then there is category B, where we have a very clear goal, where we have a very clear target. Right. So if it could be selling a product, it could be getting registrations. Right. So you will see, you know, if there is a spike in product sales and that is along with your, uh, that is, you know, coincident, it, it is coincident to your advertising campaign, then that is essentially your, you know, the uh, measure of your effectiveness. But yeah, you are, apart from this, there's like a lot of um, metrics that we use online, like click through rate and cost per click, things like that. There's a lot of <coughs> technical stuff which thankfully I as a creative person don't have to deal with on a day to day basis. But yeah, um, you have a lot of those metrics as well, which are data and insights team and listening team will pick up after a campaign and say, okay, this has been effective. This didn't perform as well as you know, we thought it would. And the good thing is um, with uh, digital media, you know exactly how much, uh, you know, how effective a campaign is even as a campaign is going on. So if a certain, um, uh, if a certain creative is not working for you, if a certain ad is not working for you, you can test it, you can change it, right, on the go. You can do it live, which is something that, you know, a print ad won't let you do because once it's, print, it's, once it's printed on a newspaper, it's there, right? But on the internet, you, can, you have um, the ability to learn from your campaign even as the campaign is going on. So, yeah, Yuval, I hope that answers your question. Yes, Yuval. Thank you, Thanks. Next, we have Sajleen. Sajleen, go ahead. She has a question for you. Good morning, sir. I am Sahajlin from grade six. So my question to you is, how do you bridge the empathy gap with your customers? Sorry, uh, could you repeat that? Yes, sir. Yeah. How do you bridge the empathy gap with your customers? Empathy, uh, how gap. Do you have... empathy gap with your customers. Empathy gap. Yeah. Oh, um, right. That's a very interesting question because <clears throat> as a brand, um, you want to be uh, relatable, right? Um, but you don't want to talk to someone, you know. So say as, um, suppose I am Mountain Dew, right? Just for exa just for an example. What I've been saying throughout is Dar ke aage jeet hai, right? Now, uh, suddenly tomorrow, I won't um, start talking about, um, you know, the fear of getting bullied. Right, because I um, because the fear of getting bullied is not a fear that is relevant to me, right? Because um, the fear of getting bullied, it's not so much uh, the fault of the person who's getting bullied, but it's the fault of the bully, right? So the fear there is a very real. So what I'm saying is, you pick the kind of conversations you want to have, right? And um, would Mountain you say? Um, <coughs> so there are certain things. There are certain things that a brand would talk about, and there are certain topics a brand will avoid, right? Um, like, um, so another good example would be, um, I'm trying to think of a failed example actually, because that would be more interesting. Uh, nothing actually comes to mind, but yeah, I mean, and personally as a writer, when I, um, I'm writing for say, um, I do, I do, see basically if I'm talking to women, I don't want to tell them that, you know, I am talking about women's problems, right? I don't, as a brand, I don't want to tell them, Ki, I know your life better than you do, right? It's about the tonality as well, right? And it's about how I put across a certain topic to you. And honestly, from a writer's angle, it takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of, you know, a lot of planning. It takes a lot of, you know, uh, getting to know your subject in depth. Because one of the first films I'd written was for Father's Day, right? And I wrote this when I was 20. I have no idea what it is to be like, a, uh, to, what, is to, what it is to be a father. 
have no idea you know what that experience is i still i mean it's still like years ahead of me right but i still had to do a lot of research i had to understand i had to put myself um, within that person shoes who i'm writing for right <coughs> to write an ad that would that they would find insightful that they could resonate with, right and essentially what you have to do is you have to when you're writing something that you want people to relate to you have to immerse yourself in their mindset to actually come up with something that is good it's essentially like acting but you're acting with words you know you're not acting on stage you are trying to be that person and then write write as they would write something that is true to their experiences but yeah, yeah. i hope that answers your question yeah, that's an interesting one the father's example that you gave uh, sham I would like to talk more on on about uh, more on it. Crown it by with. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, Sitika. The uh, next we have Jahan. Jahan, please go ahead. I'm um, good morning, Mr. Shyam. My name is Jahan, and I would like to ask, what are the four components that the company focuses on for their advertisement? What are the four components that they focus on? Okay, so, uh, huh? I've never thought of this myself. I'm just gonna try and answer it. I don't know if there's four. I don't know uh, how many there are, but I'll tell you what there are, right? So, um, if it's a, so, a company always has a product angle to it, right? Product is always in focus. So, if it is Netflix that is trying to, it could be Netflix, uh, you know, who came up with um, rupees fifty per month. to run netflix just on your mobile right so now that is a product innovation right or it could be gillette that is trying to sell you razors so every company has a product which will always be in focus that is what they are trying to sell right um now apart from that there is also something called brand image right how the company is perceived by people you know and this you will see with larger um, firms you know larger uh, companies like png right procter and gamble which owns Vicks, which owns like a bunch of other brands, you know, or like an HUL, like Hindustan Unilever, which owns Fair and Lovely, and you know, a bunch of other brands, or it could be with PepsiCo that owns <coughs> Mountain Dew, Pepsi, and all these other brands, right? You see that as a corporate, they want to be seen in a favorable light because, um, you know, companies they, I mean, they want to create that, um, they want to create that image that our company behaves as a good person within society, right? You see, um. you see google going out and doing a lot of good work within communities but after doing that good work they will also make an ad to talk about that good work right now that is where you are positioning yourself as someone who cares for society as someone who is an active member of society and so there's like there's essentially your product and um, then there's your brand image so this brand image kind of comes into play when you know you find out uh, facebook has been doing something unethical facebook has been selling your data to advertisers you know and is being irresponsible with uh, people facebook is allowing uh, you know is not uh, considering how fake news is spreading facebook is not solving for that right so image this um, you know brand image can go from solving a crisis you know to um, projecting something positive that you done so i think there's like two as far as i mean i know from my experience mom you're on mute mom yeah thank yeah thank you yeah. for the valuable information sir and please do take care of your health I think I, a ginger and tulsi tea will soothe your throat, sir. I will. I will. Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, Sham, this uh, yeah. Jahan is the youngest member of this fraternity that we have here. Uh, he's in oh. grade four, but uh, <laughs> he has a fertile, uh, absolutely uh, fertile brain, and for, he's sure. there for all, he's like a guest, uh, a guest student. I don't allow. Uh, I mean, we start with grade five or six sometimes, but Jahan is always there, and I'm really proud of yeah. this young. Going to do great Thank things you, in the country. Yes. <laughs> I think he's already way more mature for his age. He's already giving me advice and taking care of my health. So I've been sorted. He's years ahead. Of That's just a day. Yeah. Right. Yes, Rutika. You. I think you have one parent on board. Yes. Yes. We have a parent with us. We have Mrs. Pinky, uh, Nupur's mother from grade nine. I would like to welcome her to please come up and share her question. Ask her question to Mr. Shyam. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Pinky. Hello, ma'am. Yes, welcome. Hello, ma'am. Welcome. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Okay, ma'am. Uh, okay, sir. I'm good. So my question is, which is the best medium for advertising? Digital, TV, and print. That's so. That's an interesting question because um, we've uh, seen the growth of digital, you know, over the past few years. 
as you know it was slow initially but now the biggest um, digital ad- advertising firms are ones that were started 10 years ago or 15 years ago right while the biggest um, traditional advertising firms are 100 are like 100 years old right so um, there are some formats that have like tele- um, so print advertising is like the oldest right and you see that with the circulation of newspapers reducing within india it's growing right the trend here is a little different but within uh, most developed countries you see that newspapers are selling uh, few, fewer and fewer newspapers are selling <coughs> and even magazines are shifting to online formats right so um, the format of print in advertising is slowly it's i mean i won't say it's dying out uh, it is in a cer- in certain countries um, and in, in developing countries it's still you know flourishing uh, now with relation to tv uh, commercials uh, like television as a medium for advertising uh, india still has like a huge television viewership um, even the us i mean everywhere it's thriving especially around big sporting events like ipl and the super bowl that they have in the us right that's where you see maximum advertising uh, spend right because you know the maximum amount of eyeballs are watching your channels but um, i'd say that advertisers are um, growing more and more skeptical of television and print because it's not clear exactly how effectively your ad is performing over there especially um, because how much an advertiser spends depends on your trps right and recently we have had the trp scam which essentially um, gets any advertiser to especially in the traditional field of advertising to rethink ki is my money does this ta- channel actually have as many viewers as it is as it is saying it, it is it has and is my money worth it are people actually watching or are people on their phones as they are sitting in front of the tv and my channel is running right so that's um, uh, and digital is growing super fast because and we've grown actually tremendously during uh, this pandemic period which has been like a lull phase for a lot of people <coughs> digital advertising has grown advertising on digital media even if the agencies haven't grown as much advertising on digital media has grown because newspapers um, uh, you know circulation went down right uh, tv stayed the same because more and more people were still tuning in to watch tv especially more than uh, because they were home but yeah, i mean it still is it's growing man and it's like the thing of the future and you know it's it's still that's a thing it's it's still not done growing it's still not developing it's i don't think there will ever be a final phase for digital advertising but yeah it's um, it's something we can look forward to to continue booming i think <coughs> i hope that answers your question thank you so much sir thank you thanks sham that's sham uh, really well put uh, in fact that has been a question that has been i've been uh, kind of uh, uh, thinking about whether the tv is going is still uh, taking over has it is, is still on number 1 as far as uh, advertisement is concerned and uh, is digital media because i'm not a much of a digital media person uh, right. not belonging to your generation uh, that's why and i keep wondering whether actually uh, the digital media is, has taken over but uh, tell me that a lot of things are happening there so i'm yeah. sure uh, digital media in the long run will take over a lot of um, uh, a lot of advertising and all the media uh, that is there uh, to be shared so yeah. i think it was a very very interesting session uh, sham and uh, you had a marathon time speaking uh yeah. <laughs> continuously and with a jahan noticing that you really need to take care of that throat of yours yes. right <laughs> yeah i think you need to do a little bit of beta dine gargle and that will help you yeah. <laughs> right and uh, it was an eye opener to uh, see uh, there's so many facets to uh, media and uh, copywriting yeah. and uh, the children at least they become aware of the various facets and i'm sure that will help them when they make their own career choices uh so and thank you so much for taking out so much of time sham i took it for granted that you will come <laughs> and... i mean i would because i mean i, I found it super rewarding as well man because yes. one second yeah. yeah because you know it, it was it is rewarding for me as well you know um, because there's rarely like a time for self reflection normally when you're working yeah, because yeah. you know it's one task and another year i got a chance to actually pause and like wonder okay what is it that i'm exactly doing you know Yeah. what is this industry yeah. that i've been working in for the past 3 years that actually it's really interesting because i've read from your batch i think preet is also from your batch right yeah. so yeah. that new to you i don't know same batch so preet had also come in uh, sharing his aeronautical uh, experiences so he said the same thing you know that i got a time to reflect the same words yeah. you know <laughs> he said i got a time to reflect on uh, what i was doing 
So, uh, Sham, it's really been wonderful having you here. And uh, uh, I'm sure all of us have gained a lot. And so have I learned a lot from you. And I must share this secret with you that once upon a time, I did want to become a copywriter. <laughs> but I never really went into that field for various, I mean, reasons. I mean, uh, you know how life takes you somewhere, somewhere. So like that. So my life was not such a planned life as yours. So, uh, but uh, that was a passion that I uh, had and my love for words, as you can see, uh, was something that, uh, but I'm really happy to see you be so well, Sham, and uh, taking up so much of time to uh, help my children here in uh, Karnal. And it's been a great, great experience. Do you have a thank you one, uh, for Ruthika? Yes, for Sham? Yes, ma'am. Another one. Up for you. Again, just, uh, I'd like to say thanks to all, you know, for, to all the students, you know, to all the, I mean, bright students who are so many like um, interesting and, you know, questions that honestly made me think. Uh, they were, I mean, each question was like super insightful and it had, you know, uh, something unique about it. And uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for being so curious, you know, because yeah, it's been, it's been a pleasure chatting with all of you. Yeah. So please accept that bouquet of uh, flowers, Shyam. The pink Thank one you. is all for you <laughs> with Thank lots you. of love Thank you. and a virtual hug to you as well. And uh, also thank you to Rutika, okay. Rutika for coordinating this uh, session of career awareness program. Lokesh, are you the IT guy? Are you there, Lokesh? Yes, yeah, Lokesh, can we see you? Uh, Lokesh and Nikita, if she's there. Yeah. So this is all the team that makes it all happen, Sham. And uh, you're most welcome to drop by to Karnal, which is just about three hours from uh, Delhi. And right. uh, we are based there. And we'd be happy to have you uh, in person once the pandemic and all its uh, complexities are over. <laughs> yeah, that's Lokesh. Yes, Lokesh, thank you so much. And that's Nikita at the back. Say hi, Nikita. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thank you so much. So let's all unmute our mics and say a big thank you to Sham. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for putting it together. It's been a lot of fun.